first question about gravity. Let's say you're standing next to a cluster bomb and it blows up. So all these nails come flying at you. What are you going to do? You're going to run away. Why do you want to run away? Well, let's, let's ask ourselves some geometric questions. You're, let's say you're standing at one meter and you're pierced by 16 nails. How about your friend over here standing at four meters away? How is she going to fare? A similar question. The intensity of the sun on the Earth's surface is one kilowatt per square meter. That means in the sun, a square meter gets a thousand watts of light and heat on it. What if we move the Earth to half the distance? What would be the new intensity on the Earth's surface of sunlight? Both of these are examples of what I call the inverse square law. So for instance, given a light source, the light beams go out in all directions and get spread apart. As you get further and further away, that same amount of power has to be spread out over a larger area. <clears throat> and the area of a sphere, for instance, is 4 pi r squared. Right. So as you double the distance you are from the light bulb, the amount of area it's spread out grows like a factor of 2 squared or a factor of 4. And we can see this if we, for instance, make a little window and try to make windows the same size two times as far away. It would be 2 times the length, 2 times the width, or 4 times the area. So we can now venture an estimate for these problems with that knowledge. So we take gravity for instance. We can think of gravity the same way that there are these little strings of force pulling these objects together and they reach out in all directions but they get spread out as they get further away. We recognize that this is a vector quantity and it's in the negative direction meaning if everything's positive the force between these guys is toward them and not away from them. The next thing we notice is the force of gravity between these two depends on each of their masses linearly. And that should make sense. For instance, we know that if something has more mass, the force of gravity is greater on it. But should the force of gravity be greater if the other mass is bigger? And this follows directly from Newton's third law, is the force of gravity pulling on mass 1 is equal to the force of gravity pulling on mass 2. Or the force of gravity of mass 2 pulling on mass 1 is the same as mass 1 pulling on mass 2. So it follows that the force of gravity between two objects has to depend linearly on each mass. And lastly, the inverse squared law. So it was already thought before they went and measured gravity that as you got further away, the distance between these, the force should decrease like the square of the radius. Okay, then we can try to measure g. g turned out to be very small, 6.67 .6 times 10 to the minus 11. And what are the units? Very important, what are the units? Well, we need newtons, so it's got to be newtons, and then we have to get rid of these. So it has to be newtons per kilogram squared times meter squared. So newton meter squared per kilogram squared. So that means if you had two kilogram masses one meter apart, there would be a gravitational force between them of about 10 to the minus 10 newtons, very small. So how was this measured? This was measured with the Cavendish experiment where large masses were hung and there was um, a torsion pendulum in between them. And so you can imagine just a string there with very little torque, you'd be able to move it. And so we can measure very, very small forces that way. And that's how they measured the, uh, the gravitational constant. We have modern technologies that are somewhat better, where if we bounce a laser off a, a mirror, 
we can have great sensitivity with just a tiny little change in angle here. So what we want to take away from this is the inverse square law. That intensity drops like the distance squared because the area over which any energy or any substance is spread out grows like the area of that sphere. And so this is why you go away from something that's too loud because the power hitting your ear will drop by the distance squared. It's why you walk away from bright lights or you go closer to a light because you want more intensity. That's all.